Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and as the title of the video suggests today we are going to understand the implementation of a queue data structure using a singly linked list data structure so this is the part 1 wherein we discuss the overall working of a queue data structure using a singly linked list data structure so this is queue using linked list and not queue using array and in this tutorial we are going to see all the different functions of a queue data structure that is queue operations like enq dq display count etc but internally we are going to use a singly linked list and not a simple array okay so we're going to see the pseudo code we're going to understand the working step by step taking diagrammatic representation of the queue of the computer memory and we're going to cover each and every topic in detail so make sure you watch this video till the end and before we start off i'm assuming you guys already know what is a queue data structure if not we've already covered queue using array and the general data structure queue and the different operations how it works that is first in first out and all those basic topics in previous tutorials where we understood the queue data structure in detail so please go ahead and watch that first if you don't know what is a queue data structure for those who are here to understand queue data structure using linked list this video is just for you so make sure again to watch this video till the end and with that being said let's get started If you're new to my channel, my name is Tanmay Sakpal, and I do a lot of computer science and information technology video tutorials like computer programming, development, technology talks, and a lot more on this channel. So if that's something you're interested into, then definitely subscribe and turn on the notifications to get the latest updates and never miss out on such important topics. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, in the center we have Q using array. Now this is what we've already seen in previous tutorials of the Q data structure. over here we have a array of size 4 we have some elements and we are using this array as a queue data structure okay so we are implementing queue data structure using array and the visual representation of this queue can be shown over here so in a queue data structure we have two open ends so the data is pushed into the queue from one end from the rear end and it is dequeued from the front end so from where it is pushed it is known as nq and from where it is removed out it is called dq so unlike stack a queue data structure operates in first in first out manner so in stack this is how the stack would look like we have only one entry and exit point right so both push and pop happened from one end only because the other end is closed so that's why a stack operates in first in last out that is philo or last in first out but in a queue data structure the operation happens first in first out which means the first element that goes in always comes out first so in our case if this is considered as the rear end that is this side and this considered as front end the data that is enqueued first that is that is inserted first which is 45 in this case is going to be removed out first as well which is dq operation okay so that is how queue and stack differ from each other in terms of the mode in which they operate now the same data structure queue data structure can be visualized in the computer memory as follows this is the array arr and we know that array is declared and defined in the computer memory in the contiguous memory locations when i say contiguous it means right besides each other so if hash 300 is the address which is starting point of the array that is the first element of the array 45 the next address over here is hash 302 because i'm considering two bytes for integer elements and this is just for representation purpose these addresses are fictitious they are, they are not real they are just imaginary but you can see the addresses are right next to each other so in array declaration all the elements in the array are always right next to each other that is at contiguous memory locations so this is how this array would look like in the computer memory okay now when we implement queue as a array this array is made to work like a queue that is whenever you input some value in the array it would be inputted from the rear end and whenever you remove out a element from the array it would be removed from the front end so we've seen the basic queue standard functions that is enq dq count in the queue data structure tutorial where we use the array so whenever one element is removed the front is incremented and whenever one element is added the rear is incremented right so let's say we add one more element 66 so the rear will now point to 66 whenever we remove one element from the queue let's say 45 is removed the front will now move forward to 6 okay and of course the basic linear queue has some issues so that's why we also saw the different type of queue that is the circular queue which is also covered in this dsa course you can check that out 
But anyways, now let's move on to queue using linked list because we already know how queue using array works. So now let's go ahead and see how queue can be implemented using a singly linked list. Okay, so on the right hand side, we have queue using singly linked list. Now I'm assuming you already know what is a linked list, what is singly linked list, what is doubly linked list. All these topics are separately covered in this tutorials as well in this course of DSA. Do check that out if you're confused because we've talked about them in detail. But now in this diagram, you can see we have a queue, but inside the queue, we do not have array elements. You do not have simple array elements. You have nodes. Okay. So in linked list, the elements that are stored are called as nodes. Now the node will have a key, its value and a pointer, which points to the next node in the linked list. Now, since it is a singly linked list, we only have one pointer. If it was a doubly linked list, we would have a previous pointer as well. But we are using singly linked list because it serves our purpose in this tutorial. And that is what is depicted in this queue. Okay. So orange value is the key. Key is the unique identifier of a node. Okay. So for example, if our queue has 10 nodes, every node will have a unique key. You cannot have same key value nodes. Technically, you can have them. But our implementation restricts that kind of scenario. Okay. So that's why we have a key. Then we have a value, which is the actual value or data to be stored. This value can also be termed as data. Okay. So things in blue are the value. And the next is basically a pointer. So when we actually write a C++ program in the next tutorial, we will create a class node, which will have a pointer next which will also be of type node because it will be pointing to node objects only. So this next pointer will point to the next node. So over here you can see this is the first node. Let's call it N1. Okay. N1. N1 has a key of 1. It has value of 45 and it is created in the address in the computer memory at address location hash 100 and the next pointer has the next address. So hash 102 is the address of node N2. So consider this as N2. N2 is stored at hash 102. So this address is stored in the next pointer of N1. So this is how the linking is made. You can see the links. Okay. So this is basically a singly linked list only, but we will make it work like a queue. So that's the whole point of implementing a queue data structure using singly linked list. So essentially we have singly linked list as a data structure, but our operations on this singly linked list will be like working like a queue. So we will have a front pointer, which will point to the first node. So this is the front end and we will have a rear pointer, which will point to the last node. It is called a rear end. So whenever a new node will be added, it will be added over here. Okay. Then this rear will be incremented to point to that node. This linking will also be made. Let's say this is done at an address of hash 106. Let's say the key is four. The value is three. And since this node is at the rear end, the address in the next would be null. And now this address of the last node rear node will now point to this newly created node, which is 106, which is created at 106. So 106 will be stored over here. And this linking will be made. Similarly, when we remove a element from the queue, that is when we do the DQ operation, this front pointer, which is pointing to the front of the queue will be incremented to point to the next node. And then this will be removed from the queue by using the delete keyword. When we implement it in C++, you'll understand that coding side when we move, move to that, but just understand that when we increment the front pointer to point to the next node, essentially we are delinking this node and we're moving forward, right? So this diagram of a queue using nodes that is using singly linked list can be visualized in the computer memory as follows. You can see over here, the individual four nodes, N1, N2, N3, and N4 can be visualized in the computer memory as follows. Now, since these nodes are gonna be objects in C++ or any other programming language that you create, those are not array elements. So array elements are created side by side. So Q using array, you can see the elements are all side by side. But when you create node objects in the computer memory, they will be created at any random location. So you can see the first two nodes N1 and N2 are created side by side, but N3 and N4 are created at random locations. 
So right now these nodes are at random locations, but the linking has to happen. So you can see the addresses in the next pointers are the way in which the linking has happened. So that's why it is a singly linked list. So these purple arrows are the way in which they are linked to each other. So N1 is pointing to N2, N2 is pointing to N3 and N3 is pointing to N4. Now this is a singly linked list, but we want to make it work like a queue. And that is where the implementation comes into picture. That is where we have to write some code. That is where we have to have some pseudo code of individual queue functions. That is NQ, DQ, count, display and the standard functions to make this singly linked list work like a queue. Okay. So I hope you've understood the diagrammatic representation and the difference between queue using array and queue using singly linked list and how they both work. And the obvious question is what is the advantage of queue using singly linked list over queue using array? The biggest advantage is the dynamic size of linked list. So in queue using array, what happens is once you declare the size of the array, you cannot change this size because array size has to be declared at compile time. So of course you cannot add more elements than the size of the array. So you'll have to keep removing the elements from the queue and add new elements. But the size of the array, the size of the overall queue will always be 4, right? So this is the biggest advantage because in queue using singly linked list, you can have n number of node objects and you just have to make the linking. So I can create many more nodes and just make the linking and I can keep on removing and adding nodes into the singly linked list and make it work like a queue. So the size is dynamic. You can also reduce it and also increase it at runtime depending upon your requirements. As long as you have the computer memory, you can create many nodes and link them in the singly linked list way, but make it work like a queue. So that's the biggest advantage. It also has some disadvantages of the traversal of the extra memory, which is created to store the address. The node objects will take more memory compared to these basic integer variables inside the array and so on and so forth. But whenever the requirement is such that you require dynamic memory in a queue data structure, a queue using single link list is always and obviously preferred over queue using simple arrays. Okay. Okay. So now that you've understood the difference, the advantage and the diagrammatic representation of what happens in the computer memory and the queue data structure, let's discuss the individual queue operations, the standard queue operations like NQ, DQ, count, display and so on and so forth and try to implement them by taking the visual diagram representation and step by step dry run those pseudocodes. Okay, so as you can see on the left hand side, we have the node class because node is the element that we are going to store in our queue in the singly linked list way. But we have to create this node, right? Because when we implement queue using singly linked list, that is when we write a program, we will have to create a node class and our node class will have three elements in it or three data members. It would have key, which is going to be the unique identifier. It will have the value that is the actual data. So this value can also be called as data and the next would be the next pointer which points to the next node. That's the node class. Now the node class will also have member functions. So this is objects and classes concepts. I hope you know the object oriented programming concepts in C++ because we're going to use C++ to implement Q using singly linked list in the next tutorial. Right now we're just understanding the pseudo code and the basic classes and the member functions. So in the node class, the member functions would be nothing but two constructors, the default constructor. So when you create node without any parameters, the default constructor is called, we will assign the key as zero. We will assign the data as zero. So key and value, we are keeping the data type as int for simplicity purpose. Of course, the key and value can have different data types also. For example, key can be character also, key can be string also, but it has to be unique. The value can be also any data type. It can be float. It can be double. It can also be other class which you have created any other user defined class also. But as I mentioned for simplicity purpose, we are keeping the data type as int and int. The pointer next will have node class itself. So it would be a node pointer which will point to node objects only. That's why the class has to be node. So node star is pointer. So this is something which is related to C++ syntax. I hope you know the pointers concept as well, because in the next tutorial, we're going to use that extensively. And lastly, we have one more parameterized constructor, which will take the key and data from the user and assign it to the key and data data members. So this was basic. Let's see the queue class because we have to implement Q 
queue using singlet english so we'll have to have a queue class as well and this is how our queue class would look like we will have class queue the data members in class queue would be node star front and node star rear so we will need two pointers which keeps a track of the front of the node and the rear of the node so in this diagram let me draw the two pointers let's denote front by f and r by rear so front will point to the front end and rear will point to the rear end right now our queue is empty but of course as we move ahead once we start to take a look at these individual member functions we will add some nodes and we will nq and dq nodes but anyways there are only two data members in the queue class and both of them are pointers of type node because in our queue we will have node objects only moving on to the member functions the standard queue class or standard queue data structure member functions are is empty is empty is nothing but a function which checks if queue is empty then we have the nq method by the way method and functions are one and the same thing whenever there is a function inside a class it is addressed as method okay so don't confuse between the two so nq stands for adding a new node from the rear end so whenever we do a nq we will add a new node from the rear end the dq function is to remove the node from the front end so this is the front end from where the node will be removed lastly we have the count which as the name suggest gets the number of nodes in the queue at any given time and two more standard functions which is check if node exist so this is extra utility function which checks if a particular node exist into the queue by checking its unique key so let's say if we have three nodes into our queue and node n1 has the key of 1 node n2 as 2 and node n3 as 3 let's say we want to add a node n4 and n4 also has the key of 3 in that case before we nq that node into the queue we will have to check if this key matches any of the key of the already existing nodes and since in our case when we are inserting node n4 with the key of 3 this 3 will match with n3 is key which is also 3 so we cannot allow n4 to be enqueued because according to our implementation according to our rule that we are setting every node should have unique key right so this is something that we are setting in our case okay it, it is not necessary that we need to have unique keys but generally that is what is assumed and that's what we are going to implement so that's why this utility extra function and lastly we have void display which as the name suggests prints all the node in the queue okay now what we'll do is we'll one by one take a look at these individual member functions or standard queue operations and see the pseudo code and also implement the pseudo code onto our queue diagram and visualize what happens in the computer memory okay okay so as you can see on the left hand side when we actually write the c++ program we will have a main function inside which we will create the queue inside which we will create the nodes and we will do all the queue operations right so that is something that we are doing over here we are trying to visualize that scenario over here in the main function you can see first line we say queue and queue we create a object of queue so queue is a class that we just saw and this queue is basically the object then at second line we create node n1 n2 n3 and n4 and we create each of them using parameterized constructor so the key is 1 3 7 and 2 with the values of 45 6 77 and 54 respectively okay so by these two steps what happens is in the computer memory a queue object is created let's create that so this is queue okay let's say it it is created at the address location hash 104 now inside the queue object remember in the queue class we had two data members those were the two pointers front and rear so obviously initially when you create a queue object both of those pointers will have null in its address so let's write that also in the computer memory okay so at step number 1 we create a queue object queue the front and rear obviously initially will be null and null the second line we create four different nodes at four different locations which will be randomly created at any different locations in the computer memory so let's create that okay so as you can see on the screen we have created four nodes n1 n2 n3 and n4 in the computer memory as of now you can see n1 n2 n3 and n4 all of them have null in their next pointer because 
in the parameterized constructor of the node class let me just show it to you this is that parameterized constructor we were passing key and data that is key and value so this value is nothing but data only so key and data is assigned as k and d but the next pointer is not assigned anything which means it will be null we can specifically make it null as well so imagine one more line over here next equals to null so initially we make all of them null so nothing is linked as of now only the nodes are created and so far we've just executed the first two lines of the main function now after this the very first queue operation we say queue dot is empty so queue is a object of class queue i should have named it something else because queue and queue sound same but anyways initially when we create the queue object the front let's name or let's address front as f i'll write f over here and r as rear rear over here both of them are pointing to null and null so f is having null and rear is also having null right so the is empty function or is empty operation in the queue data structure in the queue class checks if front equal equals to null and rear equal equals to null in that case return true else return false so when will be our queue data structure empty when both front and rear will be pointing to null in that case we can safely assume that we have nothing inside the queue so right now if you observe the diagram also in the queue we don't have anything in the computer memory we have created four nodes but we have not linked them together we've created the queue object but inside the object both the front and rear pointers are having null so we can safely say that is empty is true which means that our queue is empty so this will return true okay so i hope this pseudo code is easy to understand it is pretty much looking like a code but it is not it is part code part english it has if else if front equal equal to null and rear equal equal to null both the conditions are true in that case our queue is empty else it is not that is the basic logic for is empty function is empty operation pretty basic let's move forward now let's see the nq operation okay so we are at q dot nq n1 so now we want to add one node inside our queue data structure so what is the logic behind nq inside the nq you can see we have certain steps the pseudo code has certain steps numbered steps so we have three major sections or three major if else if and else conditions inside the nq so three conditions number 1 is if it is empty that is if the queue is empty we have certain steps number 2 is for when we add a new node or when you nq a new node inside the queue we have to first check if that particular node already exist in the queue when i say already exist it means that you have to check for the matching key so if there are already three nodes n1 n2 and n3 with their unique keys 1 2 and 3 respectively and if you are adding one more node n4 with the same key as n3 you cannot add that right so for that we have step number 2 which checks if node exist this check if node exist is another operation which we will come to in a minute but in that case we have to print node already exist use different key okay so the first condition is if queue is empty in that case we simply have to add the new node we'll see that steps in a minute because that's the first condition which is going to be true in our case but the last condition is when the queue is not empty and when no node exist with the unique key that we want to insert so in that case we have to simply nq that node so right now if you observe the first condition is true that is if is empty is true right now so we are only interested in step number 1 at least for the first nq operation we have one more nq in fact multiple nq operations later on we'll come to that but for the first time we want to nq n1 so this n is basically n1 in the computer memory what is n1 n1 is 145 and the next pointer is having null okay so when it is n empty what we do step number 1.1 says front equals to n rear equals to n now front which is represented by f and rear which is represented by r are both pointers So when I say front and rear equal to n and n, it means that front and rear pointer both will store the address of n one. What is the address of n one in the computer memory? You can see it is hundred. That is hash hundred. So now f will have hash hundred. Let's use another color. F will have hash hundred, and r will also have hash hundred. And the first 
node will be enqueued. So after step number 1.1 and 1.2, we simply print node enqueued. What we essentially did is in the computer memory also, we will change this null and add hash 100 and hash 100 in the memory also. So now this front will point to n1, this rear will also point to n1, okay, which is hash 100, which is the first node. So in the queue, you can imagine that the node is enqueued. So let's add the node over here. Okay, so the first node is added into the queue from the rear end. Basically, it is added from the rear end and pushed till the front end because we don't have anything inside the queue. So anything you add will go till the front. And for the first time, the front and rear pointer both will point to the same node. Now, this is a unique scenario because we have only one element that is one node in the queue. So that's why front and rear will be pointing to the same node, right? So once we add one more node, the rear will point to that node and then front and rear will be pointing to two different nodes. So you'll understand that in a minute. But this is the first NQ operation where the if condition was true, that is if empty was true, that's why front and rear started pointing to N1. Both of them have hash 100, hash 100. So in the computer memory also you can see both of them are pointing to N1. And now N1, which is having the key of 1 and value of 45, that is data of 45. And the next pointer as null as of now is now enqueued into the queue. Okay, so this is N1. Okay, so now let's actually see the second NQ operation. So in the main function, you can see we say queue N2. Now we want to enqueue the next node into the queue. We've already enqueued the first node N1. So both front and rear are pointing to that as of now. And now we want to enqueue one more node. Okay, so this time it is N2 with the values of 3 comma 6. In the memory, you can see 3 comma 6 and the next pointer is currently pointing to null. So coming inside the NQ, the first thing is we check if the queue is empty. So is empty, we've already seen checks if the front and rear are pointing to null, which means the address stored in the front and rear pointer is null. So as of now, you can see the front and rear has the address of hash 100, which is the address of N1. So of course, front and rear is not null, which means that the queue is not empty. So this entire step number 1, 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3 will not be executed. We will move forward in the else if part. In the else if part, we will check if the node exists and we basically have to pass N2 over here because we want to check if this N2 that we want to enqueue, it has the key of 3. So we have to check if there exists any node inside the queue with the same key. So as of now, you can see we have N1 which has the key of 1 and N2 has the key of 3. So obviously N2 will not be there in the entire queue, which means that this key will not match. So of course, again, this second condition will also be not true. So we will completely skip this and move on to the last part where we simply have to add this N2 that is NQ this N2 inside the queue. So there are three steps. The first step we say is rear of next equals to N. Okay. So what does this mean? So 3.1 says rear of next equals to n. So right now you can observe that rear is pointing to n1. So rear has the address of 100. So we use this rear pointer to access n1. And when we access the n1 object, we say rear of next. So rear of next is basically n1 of next. What is n1 of next? That is what is the value of next pointer inside n1? It is currently null. So we have to change this and we have to change it to n n right now is basically nothing but n2 because we want to enqueue n2 right so n2's address so n2's address is now stored in the next pointer of n1 so n1 currently has null so what we'll do in the memory we will erase this null and we will store n2's address in the computer memory where is n2 created n2 is created at hash 102 so let's write hash 102 over here and in the queue also we'll make this change. So we'll erase this null, which is the next pointer of n1. We will make it hash 102. Okay. So now n1 points to n2 because n1's next is pointing to n2. So let's make that linking. So I'll make a linking over here. Right. So you can see n1 now points to n2 after step number 3.1. All right. Let's see what is 3.2. In 3.2, now what we say is, 
rear equals to n which is n2 okay so n is currently n2 so right now rear is pointing to n1 the address stored in rear pointer is of n1 but now we are changing it to n2's address what is n2's address n2 is created in the computer memory at hash 102 so now rear the address of rear will change to hash 102 so we will say hash 102 so now rear is not going to point to n1 it is going to point to n2 and we simply say that is we simply print node nq so in the computer memory also the rear the address will change to hash 102 so rear pointer that was pointing to n1 will erase that also now rear will point to n2 and that's how we nq one more node so let's add one more node into the queue okay so n2 is now nq you can see we printed nq so n1 is pointing to n2 because you can see in the next of n1 we have hash 102 hash 102 is the address of n2 so you can see this is the linking that is happening right so you can see the singly linked list linking is also there and we are using this linked list like a queue because now the rear pointer is pointing to n2 the front is obviously pointing still to n1 which is at the start of the queue but now the end of the queue is n2 so i hope you've understood the nq operation right now we've done two nq operations and now let's move forward and do one more nq and add n3 in the same way so n3 is going to be nq'd inside the queue what is n3 n3 is according to our code we have 7 comma 77 inside the computer memory also it is at hash 300 location 7 comma 77 so we'll go a little fast now because we've got a hang of it of course the first condition will not be true is empty is our queue empty no it is not so entire step number one will be skipped check if node exists does any node exist with queue of 7 inside the queue no we have key as 1 we have key as 3 so node n3 has key of 7 so it does not exist in the queue so step number 2 will be skipped step number 3 says rear of next equals to n rear is right now pointing to n2 what is n2's next right now it is null so we will change it to n3 because node n is the new n3 node that we are trying to enqueue what is n3's address n3's address is hash 300 so let's make that change over here let's make hash 300 inside the n2's next also we have to make that change in the computer memory we will say hash 300 so n2 will start pointing to n3 so let's make that linking n2 will point to n3 okay so the first linking is done 3.1 is done at 3.2 we will say rear equals to n which is n3 right now so rear was currently pointing to n2 with the address of hash 102 but now rear will start pointing to n3 which is hash 300 so let's make that change over here in the rear pointer we will say hash 300 the rear pointer will stop pointing to n2 and it will have hash 300 and lastly we will say node nq so let's add n3 over here inside the queue so this is n3 and the linking is also done because n2 is pointing to n3 you can see the next pointer in n2 is hash 300 hash 300 is the address of n3 so this linking is done and we can say node nq so in the computer memory also n1 is pointing to n2 n2 is pointing to n3 the front is still pointing to n1 but the rear will now point to n2 so let's make that change rear will point to n3 okay so we've done three nq operations so i hope the nq operation is clear to you we will do more nqs later on to understand the other parts other conditions of the nq but now let's move ahead in the main function and we will go to count so you can see queue dot count now visually obviously we can see that there are three nodes inside the queue so the count has to be three but let's see what is the pseudo code for the count and how we can get this count programmatically and step by step so the count function is pretty basic step number one is to create a count variable as zero so let's write count over here count equals to right now zero next is we create a temporary pointer node pointer which will store the address from the front pointer okay 
so temp equals to what is the address inside the front pointer right now from the memory you can see it is hash 100 hash 100 which is pointing to n1 so hash 100 is stored in the temp pointer so what we have to do we have to traverse from n1 to n2 to n3 and at the same time increment this count because it is a singly linked list right we have to traverse from one node to another node till we reach the address of null so if you observe in n3 the next of n3 is null so if we traverse from n1 to n2 to n3 and we move forward ultimately we will reach null so that is what is happening at step number three we are using a while loop we say while temp not equal to null that is till this temp node or temp pointer has some address we have to keep on executing this while loop we will say count plus plus we will say temp is equal to temp of next this step will move on to the next node and lastly at step number four we will return the count so let's go inside this while loop the first condition we are checking while temp not equal to null right now if you see temp has an address of hash 100 which means that temp is not null so we will go inside the while loop at step number 3.1 we will say count plus plus so this count will become one at step number 3.2 we will say temp is equal to temp of next now temp has currently address of 100 which is n1 temp of next so using this temp pointer which is pointing to n1 right now we are accessing n1's next the next pointer inside n1 is pointing to n2 which is 102 so 102 will now be stored 102 that is hash 102 will now be stored inside temp so hash 100 will now change to 102 hash 102 okay so again we will come at the start of the while loop we will check while temp not null now obviously temp is not null temp has a new address of hash 102 which is address of n2 so temp is pointing to n2 now so again we will go inside the loop count will become plus plus count will become 2 and then again at 3.2 we will say temp equals to temp of next so temp is currently pointing to n2 what is the next pointer inside n2 it is hash 300 which is address of n3 so hash 300 now will be stored inside temp so temp will have hash 300 again we will go at the start we will check while temp not null of course temp is not null because temp has the address of n3 which is which is a valid address so it is not null so we'll go inside 3.1 we will say count plus plus count will become 3 and now we will say again temp is equal to temp of next so temp is currently pointing to n3 what is the next pointer inside n3 it is null so now null will be assigned to temp so now temp will become null so now when we go to the start of the while loop we will check while temp not equal to null but this time temp is equal to null so this while loop will run only till temp is not equal to null so once temp becomes null we will exit outside this while loop and we will go to step number four we will say return count what is the count count is three so three is exactly equal to the number of nodes we have in this queue and this is the entire pseudocode entire logic of the count operation so three will be returned from this and we will get the output as three over here okay so i hope the count function was easy to understand it was pretty basic let's move forward now moving forward we have the first dq operation so let's see the pseudocode for dq dq is removing of node from the front side okay okay so let's go step by step to understand dq the very first step is we create a temporary pointer of type node and assign null to it so let's write temp equals to null as of now initially temp is null we're going to use this later on so let's move forward step number two is we have to check if the queue is empty now if the queue is empty you cannot dequeue it right you cannot remove nodes from queue which does not have any nodes obviously so that's why step number two itself we check is empty in that case print queue is already empty okay but obviously observing right now our current scenario our queue is not empty we have three nodes inside the queue so this step number two and 2.1 will be not executed will not we will skip this we will move to the third else now in the else part we have two conditions for two different scenarios the first scenario 3.1 is when we have only one single node inside the queue and when that happens remember the front and rear will be equal which means that front and rear will be pointing to the same node 
So in that scenario, we have some extra things to do and we will see that when that condition becomes true. But right now, front and rear are not equal because front is pointing to n1 which has the address of hash 100, rear is pointing to hash 300 which is n3. So of course 3.1 will not be executed, we will move to 3.2. Now in 3.2 what we have to do, we have to dequeue n1 because new nodes are added from the rear end and existing nodes are removed from the front end. That's why it is first in first out operation in the queue data structure. So of course n1 has to be removed. So how do we do that? First we say 3.2.1 we say temp equals to front. Remember we created a temp node at the start and assigned null to it. Now we will store the address of front. Front is currently pointing to n1 which is hash 100. So hash 100 will be stored inside temp. After this at 3.2.2 we will say front equals to front of next. So front is currently pointing to n1. What is the next pointer inside n1? It is storing n2's address which is hash 102. So this 102 will now be stored inside the front pointer. So now front will start pointing n2. So the address inside front will also change. It will change to hash 102. In the memory also hash 100 will change. It will change to hash 102. So front will now start pointing to n2. n2 as the address of hash 102. And lastly we will say return temp. So temp is still pointing to n1 right. Temp as the address of 100. So this pointer will be returned from dq into the main function. So we can simply access the value of n1 which is 1 and 45 inside the main function. So you can do anything with that in the main function and we will do that in the programming part. But now once we return that we can delete this n1 from the memory also. So when we do that we completely erase out this element from the memory. So let's do that and once we do that this complete linking is also broken and now we only have two elements inside the queue. So dq basically removes one element from the start from the front end and nq basically adds one element from the rear end. Let's do the dq one more time. So your second dq operation is called. In the first dq we removed n1. So from the computer memory also this linking is broken and consider this entire element to be erased. So now let's call the dq one more time. Again we will create a temp pointer. Temp will have null initially at this step number one. Then we move forward we check if empty. Of course the queue is not empty. So 2 and 2.1 will be skipped. In the third else part the first 3.1 is a condition if front and rear are equal which means that we have only one element inside the queue. But right now front is pointing to n2, rear is pointing to n3. So front and rear are not equal. So entirely 3.1 will be skipped. We will move to 3.2. In 3.2 we will say temp equals to front. So temp initially had null but now temp will store hash 102 because front is 102. So hash 102. Then we will say front equals to front of next. Front is pointing to n2 right now. n2 is next as 300 that is hash 300 which is the address of n3. So that will be stored in front. So hash 300. So front now will start pointing to n3. In the memory also front value has changed to hash 300. So front will also start pointing to n3. So front and rear are pointing to the same object, same node right now. And lastly we will say return temp. Temp was pointing to n2 because temp has the address of 102. So 102 address node will be returned into the main function and then we can you know print the values of n2 which is dequeued value of key of 3 and value of 6 and simply delete that node over here. So that we will do in the main function. I have not written the code for that because that we will see in the implementation side. But once you delete that this entire node will be erased off from the memory. So this linking will also be erased and from the computer memory also n2 will be erased. So n2 is completely gone. Now we only have n3 inside the queue. 
so let's move forward in the main function now we are calling count and we've already seen the count pseudo code this time the count will be one because we only have one element inside the queue we have one more nq operation of n4 but before this nq let's assume that we have one more dq let's do the one more dq so let's do this extra dq again and now again we will do the dq we will create a node temp which will store initially null then in step number two we will check is empty it is not empty we have one element inside our queue or one node inside our queue n3 now in the else part this time if you see 3.1 will become true in 3.1 we are checking if front equal equal to rear this time front and rear are pointing to the same node because we only have one node inside the queue so obviously both front and rear will be pointing to that same node the address is hash 300 hash 300 so this time we have to do some extra things first obviously we will say temp equals to front or you can also say temp equals to rear because both of them have the same address so temp will now store hash 300 next step we will say front and rear equal to null and null so 3.1.2 and 3.1.3 .3, we will make both front and rear as null so remember when you empty out the entire queue obviously the front and rear pointers should have null because that is the initial state right so front and rear will become null so in the computer memory also both these addresses have to become null so whatever they are pointing that also has to be erased so initially they were pointing to n3 but now both of them are made null so they are not pointing to any object and lastly we will say return temp temp was hash 300 which is n3 so that will be returned over here and we can print out the n3's values which is 7 and 77 so that will be printed at this dq operation that can be printed in the main function and we can write the code separately and we can delete the node also so we will erase this from the queue and that will also be erased from the memory okay so now you can see we have pretty much emptied the entire queue we've deleted all the extra nodes so now i hope you've understood the entire dq operation with both the different scenarios of 3.1 and 3.2 that's the reason why we did an extra dq now let's move on to the nq operation nq n4 we've already seen the pseudocode for nq but let me just show it to you over here once again in nq the first condition will be true that is is empty if it is empty front and rear will be pointing to n n in this case is n4 that we are trying to nq over here n4 is 2 and 54 so the front will point to n4 what is n4's address n4's address is hash 204 so both front and rear will start pointing to n4 so hash 204 hash 204 in the memory also the front and rear pointer will start pointing to hash 204 hash 204 so both front and rear are pointing to the same node so 1.1 and 1.2 is done and we will simply say node n queued so we can add the node inside the queue so that's the node added n4 this is n4 both front and rear are pointing to the same node then we have a count which will obviously be one because we have one node inside the queue and lastly we have the display function so let's take a look at the display function also now the display function is pretty basic first we will check if the queue is empty so first condition is for that if it is empty obviously we will print the queue is empty but right now you can see it is not we have one node inside the queue so in the else part we will say print all values so on the screen on the command prompt when we write the code we will say print all values we will create a node temp which will store the address of the front right now it is hash 204 and then we will use a simple while loop we will say while temp not null print temp key and temp data that is step number 2.3.1 and at 2.3.2 .2, we will say temp equals to temp of next so initially temp will be pointing to n4 what is the key and data we will print 2 comma 54 then we will say temp equals to temp of next so temp is currently pointing to n4 what is the next pointer inside n4 it is null so then null will be stored inside temp 
and when we go at the start of the while loop we will check while temp not null but temp has become null so we will exit outside this loop so in case if we had more nodes inside this queue we would have kept printing the node values and kept moving the temp from n4 to n5 to n6 and n7 and so on and so forth till we get one null value okay so that is the basic display function so one last function that is left is check if node exist so as the name suggests this node takes a node let's say we have one more node n5 and right now you can see in the queue we have n4 which has the key of 2 right so let's say we want to push one more node n5 with the key, same key as 2 and some random value of 10 so this is something that we want to enqueue right so when we want to enqueue n5 we will first have to check if there exist any node with the same key value of n5 right so that is what this function is all about. So inside the check if node exists, we want to enqueue n5, which is 2 comma 10. So the key is 2. So we will create a temp node for again iterating the entire queue. So this methodology is used to iterate the queue. We will store the address of the front pointer. The front is pointing hash 204, which is the address of n4. Now we will again use the while loop while temp not null to iterate through the entire queue obviously right now we only have single value but inside this loop what we are checking is we will check if temp of key so temp is currently pointing to n4 so temp of key which is n4's key is 2 is equal equal to n of key so n is this new node n5 which we want to enqueue what is the key it is 2 so this is equal right so in that case we will say exist equals to true so at step number two, I missed this step. We create a Boolean variable exist. We assign false to it initially, but we make it true when we have a match of keys and we will break out of this loop completely over here once a match is found and then we will at the step number four, we will return exist. So in case if there is a match, so in case if there is a node which is having the same key as n5, this exist will become true right because we will go inside the if condition and we will return exist as true but let's say we have three values inside the queue or three nodes inside the queue let's say it is n4 n5 and n6 and we want to insert n7 with a key value of 7 let's say we have n4 n5 and n6 which have 2 5 and 6 as the key values and n7 has the key value of 7 so 7 is not there in any of the nodes inside the queue right so in that case we will keep running this loop but there would never be a situation where temp of key will match n of key so this exist will never become true the exist will remain false as we create it at the very start and then we will return this false so this is how the check if node exist function will work and this pretty much concludes all the different standard queue operations when we're using singly linked list as a queue okay so when we are implementing queue using singly linked list okay so i'm going to conclude this tutorial over here i know it was a lengthy one but all the different standard operations had to be covered extensively with the help of pseudocode as well as the diagrammatic representation for the best understanding and i hope you've got a very clear idea about how you can implement a queue using singly linked list and implement all the standard operations and we also saw the pseudocode of these standard operations and dry run those step by step by taking the visual diagram as well as the computer memory diagram to understand at every step what is happening for the best clarity and best understanding so i hope you like this video and if you watched this video so far please give this video a like let me know in the comments how this video was do share it with your friends in the next video tutorial, we will write a C++ program that is we will see the practical side of implementing Q using singly linked list and we are going to need all the pseudocode of all these standard operations and we will convert them into C++ code. So that will be interesting as well. So stay tuned for that and thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.